What's up everyone and welcome to Tech in Black. I've been wanting to test a really powerful e-bike for a while now, one with specs that are impressive on more than just paper. And finally, I've got my hands on the Blue Vol K10 Trail, one of the most talked about and interesting models of 2025. First thing I wanted to do was see how this monster handles regular city traffic. And you know, it's a pretty interesting feeling. On one hand, this is definitely not your average bike. The two motors with a peak power of 2000 watts give you a really confident and quick start, which makes it easy to get ahead of traffic. On the other hand, even with all its power and massive look, it feels surprisingly comfortable. A big part of that is the full suspension, which is the key feature of the trail version. It does a great job of soaking up small bumps in the asphalt, making the ride feel smooth. But before I give my final thoughts, let's go back to the very beginning, the unboxing. Let's see what the Blue Vol K10 trail looks like right out of the box and what the assembly process is like. So the bike comes in this big box, and it does require some assembly. Let's open it up, see what's inside, and what we need to do to get it ready to ride. Everything seems to be packed pretty securely. Right on top, we have a smaller box. Let's open it up. And this is the top battery. This is one of the two batteries that power this bike. It's a 52 volt, 20 amp hour unit, and it's removable, which is super convenient for charging. Next up, we've got the charger. It's a standard three amp charger. Since there are two batteries, this is probably not the only one in the box. And here is the second battery, also packed in its own box for safety. This one is slightly larger, a 52 volt, 23 amp hour unit, Having two large batteries like this is what gives the K10 Trail its impressive range. And, as expected, here is the second box with another charger inside. It's great that they include two, so you can charge both batteries at the same time. It should take about six to eight hours to fully charge them both from empty. This is the headlight. It looks pretty substantial, which is good for visibility. Next, we have a phone holder. This is a nice little bonus. It feels sturdy and even has a USB port built in so you can charge your phone on the go, which is a very practical feature. Here are the pedals. They look like standard, durable metal platform pedals. Nothing too fancy, but they should provide good grip. The bike also comes with a small toolkit. We've got a multi-tool, a wrench, and some zip ties for cable management. Okay, time for the bigger components. Here's the front wheel. It's a 20-inch wheel with a 4-inch wide fat tire. This is what gives the bike its all-terrain capability. And finally, the rest of the bike. It's pretty heavy, as you'd expect with two motors and a steel frame. Now that everything's out of the box, let's put it all together. The first step in assembly is installing the handlebars. It's a pretty straightforward process. The handlebar mount is already on the steering tube. You just need to unscrew the four bolts on the faceplate using the provided Allen key. Once the faceplate is off, you can place the handlebars into the mount. It's a good idea to center them properly right away Look for the markings on the handlebars to help you align them. After that, you put the faceplate back on and start tightening the bolts. It's important to tighten them in a crisscross pattern to ensure even pressure. Don't over-tighten them at first, just get them snug. You can make final adjustments to the angle of the handlebars later to find the most comfortable riding position for you. And that's it, the handlebars are on. Now, let's secure the front wheel. It's important to make sure it's firmly fixed so there's no wobble, I'm tightening it from both sides alternately to ensure even pressure. And that's it, the wheel is securely fastened. Now, let's install the front lights. This is an important safety feature. First, the turn signals. We'll mount them on the edges of the handlebars for better visibility. It's pretty simple to do. Next is the headlight. It gets installed in the center of the handlebars on its bracket. The main thing is to aim it so it lights up the road well without blinding others. Now we connect the wires from the turn signals and headlight to the bike's main wiring. Done, the lights are in place. We're almost there. The last steps are to install the pedals and the batteries. There's one important detail with the pedals. They have different threads. They are marked with an L for left and an R for right. The right pedal screws in clockwise and the left one screws in counterclockwise. It's best to start them by hand to avoid damaging the threads and then tighten them with a wrench. Now, let's install the power sources. We have two of them. First, the top battery. It just slides into its mount until it clicks. Then, the bottom one, which is integrated into the frame. It also clicks easily into place. 
By the way, the batteries themselves have a button to check the charge level. Let's press it. This is very handy for quickly checking the battery status without even turning on the bike. And here it is, the fully assembled Bluevol K10 Trail. It definitely looks impressive. All the components are in place and it's ready for its first real test. Well, the assembly is done and we're back on the street for a test ride. Let's start off slow. I've put the bike in the first pedal assist mode and will be using only the throttle, no pedaling. In the first mode, the bike starts very gently, without any jerks. The speed is low, which is perfect for a relaxed ride in a park or in heavy pedestrian traffic. The power is limited, and that gives you full control over the bike. And now, let's see what happens if we open it up. I've switched to the fifth maximum mode, but notice, I'm not going full speed. I'm maintaining a comfortable 20 miles per hour, or about 32 kilometers per hour. Even at this speed, which is already comparable to city traffic, the bike feels absolutely stable. The full suspension handles all the bumps perfectly, and the wide tires provide excellent traction. You can feel the massive power reserve on hand, but at the same time, you can just cruise along in this calm mode, simply enjoying the ride. We've already seen that in the calmer modes, the K10 Trail behaves like a well-behaved city cruiser. But what if you twist the throttle all the way? Now that's what I call performance. Both motors engage at full power, 34 miles per hour. At this speed, you really need to be focused. But the bike holds the road confidently, with no hint of instability. And this isn't even the limit. Right now, I don't have the ideal conditions for a top speed run. But if you have a clear and safe stretch of road, this bike is capable of hitting its claimed 35 miles per hour. That's getting into light motorcycle territory, not just a bicycle. The power reserve is just incredible. We've gone over the assembly and ride quality in detail. Now let's take a close look at the controls on the Bluevol K10. It all starts, just like a motorcycle, with the ignition key. Turn the key and the system is ready to go. Then, on the left-hand remote, press and hold the power button. The display comes to life, showing all the key information, speed, battery level, current PAS mode, and mileage. The control buttons are also located here. The plus and minus buttons are for switching between the five pedal assist PAS modes. The higher the mode, the more power the motors deliver. And here's an interesting feature, a separate button to turn the front motor on and off. This lets you ride in rear-wheel drive only to save energy, or engage all-wheel drive for maximum power and traction. This is also where we have everything for the lights and signals. Here is the turn signal switch, left, right. There are turn signals on both the front and back. It's all simple and intuitive. Next to it is the on-off button for the headlight and the horn. It's very loud, almost like a scooter's, which definitely adds a layer of safety in city traffic. On the right handlebar, there is a seven-speed Shimano shifter. This allows you to change gears when you're pedaling, and here is the mechanism itself, a Shimano rear derailleur. This is very useful if you want to ride it like a classic bicycle, save battery, or if the batteries have run out completely. Now let's move on to the suspension as it is fully adjustable here, which is a great advantage. Let's start with the front fork. It has two main adjusters, compression and preload. The preload adjuster allows you to adapt the initial stiffness of the fork to your weight and the compression adjuster controls how quickly the fork compresses when hitting an obstacle. You can make it more responsive and soft for off-road riding, or conversely, slower and more damped to reduce bobbing on flat sections. The rear shock is also adjustable. By turning this adjustment ring, you change the spring's stiffness. You can make the suspension as soft as possible for a comfortable ride over bumps, or conversely, stiffer for better handling and efficient pedaling. The ability to fine-tune the bike to your preferences is a huge plus. And now, let's ride on some uneven park paths. This is where the full potential of the full suspension is truly revealed. The front fork and rear shock transform a bumpy road into a smooth and controlled ride. Small bumps, tree roots, and cracks in the pavement simply disappear under the wheels without causing you any discomfort. The wide 4-inch tires also contribute acting as an additional shock absorber and providing phenomenal traction on loose surfaces. Thanks to this combination, the bike feels incredibly stable and predictable. You're not just riding, you're more like floating over the bumps. This combination of suspension and tires is designed to provide confidence and comfort on light off-road terrain, turning every ride through the park or on a forest trail into a real pleasure. 
Well, we've looked at it from all angles, from assembly to its performance on and off the road. So, what is the Bluval K10 Trail at its core? On one hand, it's a calm and comfortable cruiser for everyday use. Thanks to its full suspension and wide tires, it allows you to get around the city with incredible comfort, ignoring curbs and potholes. But on the other hand, just twist the throttle, and it transforms into a real beast, capable of delivering a storm of emotions from its insane acceleration, thanks to the dual motors. It's a true Swiss army knife in the world of e-bikes. It combines seemingly incompatible things, a huge reserve of power, an impressive range thanks to its dual batteries, and a level of comfort that lets you ignore the imperfections of the road. So, folks, here's my brief summary. First, dual power. Second, dual battery. Third, full comfort. Fourth, versatility. Fifth, rich features. Verdict, definitely recommended. As for the price, it may vary by region and current promotions. I'll leave a link in the description. Follow it to check the latest price. If you like this model, go ahead and order one for yourself. Thanks for watching and safe travels.